what the current generation Pixel can do on the front facing camera. And one of the only times I, I would ever consider using a selfie camera if there's a group setting. They've also got this other adapter over here. I don't know if this thing screws on. I mean, maybe you even want more. Maybe you're getting crazy. Let's take a look at what's inside. So we have that piece. That's the main component. Look, there's a, that's, that's you, Jack. That's you and uh, Casper. Is this a genuine leather wrist band? No, absolutely not. The front adapter, man, this is pretty wild. This clips onto the front camera and that's what gives you the wide angle in that department. Does this go on to protect it? Let's see. Oh, that's a magnet. That's well designed. Hmm. Oh, that's a kickstand. Does that make sense, Jack? Yeah, that makes sense, right? Little kickstand option. I'm not sure why you need that. Who needs a digital SLR? That's all I have to say. Oh my God. Look at this lens. Wow. Holy. Ultra wide 12 mil. This for me, as cool as this is, it's it's like at this point it's getting a little out of hand. A lot of you are like, geez, get a real camera at that point. There are still some advantages though to using a smartphone, which is the fact that you're connected so you can share immediately. And that's kind of the place and way that people are consuming user generated content. Now, maybe you want to be out there shooting video, streaming it, uh, uh, broadcasting it immediately after, then you could use something like this to get a look that is much different than what a typical smartphone is capable of. But for me, this is a step, a step, maybe a step too far in this situation. Whereas this, I, I feel like is a lot more practical and you're carrying the whole package around. It's still pocketable. All right, so I mean, it fits on, like a typical case. So this guy just slides in and you can see it kind of clicks at different points along the way. What are we looking at? I mean, are we, we're looking at the two standard cameras and then we got another six. That's an eight camera setup, Jack. And then this guy, I guess would slide like this and it clicks in. So there you go. Front camera, also wide now. Let's take a look at some of these focal ranges. All right, we have our favorite model here. He's ready for a, he's ready to fight Jack. <laughs> Give him a deal, give him a new contract. All right, so this is 1X standard iPhone camera. Boom, done. 2X standard iPhone camera. Boom, done. And then we're gonna slide on the first lens situation. Oh, you can tell right away that's wider. That's quite a bit wider. We'll move to the two on this same module. Go to the next. Ooh, we're into the zoom range. Significant zoom range here. That's probably the minimum focusing range somewhere around there. The 1X, oh, and we're fully in fisheye territory here on the 1X. And the last option here, oh, this must be the macro. It's basically touching and the detail is there. Oh my God, holy iPhone. Look at this. You see the grooves in the paint, okay? So the macro, very nice to have. You know what? Let's try and get this text on the Starbucks. That's one of the coolest things about these adapters is the macro, in my opinion. You can actually see the way it was printed on. You can see the stamp there. You can see the way the ink dried. How about this knife? Unbox therapy knife. Actual letters. Grain of the steel. Jack, you gotta be impressed, no? Look at that. Come on now. And oh my goodness, is this a 2X macro now? So that's the 1X which is already like super close. You can see the grain in the object here, but you go to the 2X and you're like in, you're in the grain. Remember, it's 120 degree wide angle, which we showed you it's way back from this guy. There was the fisheye as well, which gives you the black border around and that circular appearance, also very wide in interpretation. 10X macro, 20X macro, which we just showcased to you. And then a 2X telephoto, that's useful. That's sort of uh, a more traditional or typical lens adapter. It's also the most common implementation we've seen for a secondary camera unit on most smartphones. It's just like throw the zoom in. So that's a little less exciting, a little less interesting to me. We might as well slide this on and see what we're working with. Now that's giving you a lot more weight at that point. <laughs> wow. Funny enough, this seems to have changed the whole like color of the frame as well. So it's a wide angle shot. So it gives you this cool kind of perspective and it's just one of the benefits of having a bigger piece of glass. You can just get, you can produce sharper images. Yes, it's an adapter. You're still using the lens on the camera, but 
this is just giving you an advantage over some of the smaller adapters on the travel piece. You guys can see there. You're sharing this stuff on social media for the most part anyways, and the discrepancy between the wide adapter that exists on the travel unit and this one, once you've shared it, once it's compressed, chewed up by the various social media, it's like, I don't know if it's worth the headache of carrying around the actual bigger adapter. Okay, last up, we have the selfie unit, and this gives you the wide angle on the front. So first things first, I should just shoot a front selfie without the adapter. All right, regular focal range. There you go. Typical stuff, kind of boring. And then we slide this guy on. Oh yeah, that's wider. I mean, it's not crazy wide, but it didn't really do the thing I was hoping for it to do, which is give you enough leeway to fit other people in the frame. I mean, this is, you're still in the territory of like fitting one other person, really. I think this piece is what this unit is all about. I think it's what makes it cool. It's small, it has a magnetic cover. You can keep it on the case permanently and you get this wide variety of possibilities for shots. You can really get creative with it because part of the thing is with photography on smartphones these days is the smartphones themselves are doing such a good job algorithmically of letting you leave it in automatic mode and then re referencing and changing the dynamics of the photo based on the neural network and all this wild technology. So it's kind of taking you, the photographer, out of the equation to a certain extent. You bring something like this onto here and it's kind of the best of both worlds where you can still get creative, you can still make certain choices for focal range, which then changes perspective and changes an entire image. And then you can still utilize some of the smarts that exist within the smartphone to then kind of enhance those creative decisions. Right, there you go, this is the travel set edition. Flimsy box right there. What's the price, Will? Lay it down, let us know. $69.99, you know what? $69.99, hmm. Catch a shot of a mosquito or something.